Hello gents, welcome to our video on vapor pressure. Now, to begin our conversation about vapor pressure, we're going to look at evaporation versus vaporization. You've heard of both of those terms before, but you may have used them interchangeably without knowing the difference between the two. So today we're going to differentiate between those two things. Now evaporation is when molecules escape into the gas phase or escape into the vapor phase without being at the boiling point. We've all seen that before. You have a glass of water outside or a bucket of water outside or in the house and over time that water level begins to diminish and that's because some of those <clears throat> water particles that are in the liquid phase have gone and transformed into the gaseous phase or the vapor phase without being at the boiling point which for water the normal boiling point is around 100 degrees Celsius and you know that your room is in 100 degrees Celsius usually it's around 24 degrees Celsius but still particles can escape into the vapor phase or the gaseous phase. Now, that's what evaporation is. Particles escaping into the gaseous phase without being at the boiling point. Now, vaporization, sorry, evaporation is necessary to have vaporization. So you need both. To break that down, let's look at a scenario. Let's say we have water in a beaker. It's at room temperature. It's not being heated at the moment, it's just sitting there in the beaker. Now it's at some temperature, the water's at room temperature. So temperature by definition is the average kinetic energy of the particles in that particular substance. So these water molecules, let's say, these liquid molecules, are at some average kinetic energy. If it's an average, that means that some particles here, some blue particles, are moving faster than others to get an average kinetic energy. So some of those particles that are moving faster, if they're moving faster, what they're going to do is, let's say this particle is moving very fast. It may bump into one of the surface molecules. This surface molecule may gain enough energy to leave the liquid phase. So some particles will have enough kinetic energy to break the intermolecular forces that are holding them, in the, holding them in the liquid phase and leave. So for example, let's say this one does hit this surface molecule. This surface molecule may have enough energy to break free and become a vapor particle above the surface. And it's moving around, you know, freely. That can happen over and over again to the surface molecule. And eventually, we have gaseous particles above the liquid particle. This is called vapor. Vapor is a gas particle that used to be the liquid phase. So surface molecules will be knocked into the vapor or gaseous phase. That is called evaporation. Now, <clears throat> once these particles, if we look to the next diagram here. Once these vapor particles have escaped, they encounter something above it. Above every standing body of water or above anything, really, we have atmospheric pressure. These are air molecules that are exerting pressure downward on the vapor. So the vapor is released here in the blue. It encounters the atmospheric pressure. That encounter is pressure filled as well. So the vapor exerts a pressure on the atmosphere. We call that vapor pressure. <clears throat> so this vapor, these blue dots here are exerting a pressure up on the atmosphere, that's called vapor pressure. Now let's say I apply heat to this here. So now evaporation has happened naturally, you know, with the water just standing there at room temperature. Now let's say I turn the heat on. I start to boil this water, or I start to heat it up, excuse me. I try, I try to boil it. I start to heat it up. And as more intermolecular forces in the liquid are broken, you get more vapor. Because as these particles start to move around faster, they're going to knock each other out of the liquid phase at a more rapid rate. So as more intermolecular forces are broken, I get more vapor, so I get more vapor pressure. Eventually, I'm going to get enough vapor pressure that... The vapor pressure here, these blue dots, will equal the atmospheric pressure, the red dots. I have seven red ones. Let's say I have seven blue ones, you know, interacting with it. 
once I reach that point where atmospheric pressure and vapor pressure are equal, I'll have this kind of equilibrium going on. Meaning, some of the vapor particles, these blue particles, they're going to hit the atmospheric pressure or atmospheric particles and get knocked back down into liquid phase. But at that same time, I still have heat being applied, so some of these liquid particles are going to be coming into the vapor phase, the gaseous phase. So I have particles in the vapor phase going back down into the, the liquid phase, and some of the liquid particles coming back up into the gaseous or vapor phase. There's a special term for that. So when we have evaporation, liquid particles going into the vapor phase, and then we have condensation, vapor particles going into the liquid phase, and that's happening at an equal rate. That's called a dynamic equilibrium. Keyword, equilibrium. Once we have dyna dynamic equilibrium taking place, then we have the parameters for boiling or vaporization. So when the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation, vaporization ensues. It takes over. And at that point, vapor particles can escape through the atmospheric pressure easily. Now let's talk about <clears throat> vapor in a larger concept larger context, excuse me. So let's talk about volatility, vapor pressure, and temperature. When vapor pressure increases, it increases with temperature. So the more average kinetic energy you have of those particles, the more energy is going to be given to those particles so they can actually escape the liquid phase. Once they do, they become vapor. That vapor exerts more pressure. So the higher the temperature, the more it increases, the more vapor pressure you're going to get. Substances with a higher vapor pressure will evaporate more quickly than substances with a lower vapor pressure. Now, if you're a liquid that evaporates very easily or very readily, it's, you're said to be a volatile liquid. So, if you evaporate very easily, you're volatile. Something like a hydrocarbon that's liquid, very volatile. Intermolecular forces aren't very strong there. So with an increase in temperature, you can get vapor very easily, so it's a volatile liquid. Let's look at how vapor pressure and boiling point relate. Boiling occurs when the vapor pressure equals the external pressure acting on the surface of the liquid, which we call atmospheric pressure, as we just talked about Last fourth. The boiling point of a liquid at one atmosphere, very particular, at one atmosphere, is called the normal boiling point. For example, for water, that's 100 degrees Celsius. As the pressure changes, in this case, we'll say as the pressure, the external pressure, increases. External pressure, again, talking. mostly atmospheric pressure. As that atmospheric pressure in changes, or increases in this case, the temperature at which liquid boils increases. And the opposite is true as well. Now, scientists do not always observe substances at the normal boiling point, one atmosphere. So, phase changes are often looked at through various pressures and various temperatures. So we observe phase changes at many different pressures, many different temperatures to see how our working world actually operates. We'll go into this point in the future. Gentlemen, take notes. Adios.